The land of the free has the biggest prison population in the history of mankind. And how did that happen? When I was a kid, there were a few hundred thousand people in prison in the United States. Governor Ronald Reagan in California was proudly shutting down prisons. Reagan was responsible for an inmate bill of rights. And yet, in the last 30 years, there's been a total transformation of the American prison system. Today, there are about 2.2 million people behind bars in the United States, more than in communist China. I've been going into prisons for the last 20 years. And who have I met behind bars? Well, there are murderers and armed robbers and rapists and child molesters. But the majority of people behind bars are nonviolent offenders. About two-thirds of them are African American or Latino. They're overwhelmingly poor, substance abusers, a large number of mental patients, huge rates of illiteracy. So whereas 30 years ago in the United States we were building low-income housing, today we're building prisons as a form of low-income housing. There's about 200,000 women behind bars, overwhelmingly nonviolent, uh, many of them in prison because their spouses or their boyfriends were drug dealers and they wouldn't rat them out. And there are tens of thousands of people who are in solitary confinement. Uh, some of them are major gang leaders, some of them are people who are violent, and it makes sense to put them in solitary. But the majority aren't, and they're prey to all kinds of health problems psychological problems being locked away for weeks, months, years by themselves in a cell only allowed out for two hours, maybe a day. For most of these nonviolent offenders, there are so many other less expensive ways to deal with them in the community. For example, mental patients. We used to have mental patients in mental hospitals and then we shut down the mental hospitals. So now they're in prison. The largest single facility for mental patients in the United States is the L.A. County Jail. And it is so much more expensive to incarcerate people with mental illness than to treat them in the community. In the United States, we're privatizing our prisons and giving them to corporations to make money off of locking people up. All of this is relevant in Great Britain because Great Britain is the only country in the Western industrialized world that's imitating American correctional practices. Great Britain has one of the largest prison populations in Europe, overcrowded facilities. There have been major cutbacks in staffing in Great Britain, rise in private corrections. And the other thing that's being imitated here uh, is the whole notion of having large prison facilities. You're building facilities here with a thousand inmates. It's exactly the wrong way to build and manage a prison. So why is it so important to look at prisons? Why is it so important what you're doing to the people uh, who are locked away? Most of them will walk free one day. Most of them will be on the streets, in the malls with people. And what you do to them behind bars has consequences. But beyond that, what motivates my work on prisons and the American prison system is the notion that if you really want to understand a society, look at how it treats the people at the very bottom. And that's who you'll find in America's prisons. The only thing money could buy were cars, vacations, luxury yachts. Inequality wouldn't matter very much. But where money determines access, to the fundamental necessities, inequality matters a lot more than it otherwise would.